everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us back at Wide Tennis. I'm Alex Wright, and today I'm joined by the uh, director of tennis at Robbie Wagner's tournament training, Stoner Coleman. Stoner, Hi, thank everyone. you for joining us today. How are you doing today, sir? I'm all right. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Great, great. Uh, so first question of the day, um, how did you first begin playing tennis? I began playing tennis at a local resort in Jamaica. My grandma was a nanny, and her boss at the time was a British woman who grew up playing tennis as a child in England. So therefore she thought me being into tennis would make a good impact versus off the court and on the court. So my grandma got me involved. She never had enough money to pay for tennis lessons. So her uh, boss at the time actually paid for my lessons in the beginning and equipment ETC. So that's how I got involved as a ball boy. So I'll pick up balls at the local tennis courts there at the resort and I'll get tips. Some days I wouldn't get tips, but by doing it, I became fond of it and learning the sport from <clears throat> the guy who ran the tennis facility, a guy by the name of Desmond Brown. So there's a lot of talent that came out of that same uh, resort that actually has gone on to coach U.S. Open champions. Really? Yeah. For example, Sloane Stephens. Her coach is a guy by the name of Sylvester Black who developed her from age, I want to say 11, all the way until age 16. And also, actually, still tour with her currently because she just got married this past summer, I want to say. Yeah. So, for example, or December, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But we have, you know, his daughter also played the U.S. Open. And we have countless players who have represented the Jamaican Tennis Federation and also moved to the States in a similar situation like myself and coach numerous college kids or develop them into the players that they are to go and get a scholarship into these Ivy Leagues really? or top 10 D1 programs. Okay. Yeah. And then um, as, a, as a kid, did you have any role models in the tennis world that influenced your love for the sport? Role models. Desmond Brown was a role model to me because of what he did for the kids in my local community okay. and how funny he was and how he made the sport so enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So going to the tennis court was like our daily routine. It was fun there. So no, even though we never had a lot of money, it was a happy place. And okay. it was a place we find a lot of joy. We played tennis. And it brought us all together. In terms of another role model, I'd say growing up, my role model was actually for tennis was Andre Agassi. Really? I wanted to be like him. He was flashy, flamboyant, very interesting. You know, the style of how he played, I just thought it was just so more transitioned towards my game. Yeah. So I transitioned my game towards his actually correction. So I like him. So mm -hmm. I could relate to him in that sense, you know. No guys was wearing earrings at the time. He had one, yeah. you know, he had the flashy colors and colors, colors traditionally used to be like, you had to be all in white clothes. And I think him bringing in all these colors to the tennis world, he changed it. If you look at how tennis today, most people don't wear just typical white clothes. Yeah. People wearing colorful socks, you know, neon green, black hair, you know, pink hair. It's more fashionable now. Yeah. So he, he I'll say Andre Agassi. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, being from Jamaica, what inevitably brought you to America? Well, tennis brought me to America because of my skill set. Okay. And as a tennis player, it opened up many doors, exposure to a lot of things, different cultures. And that's essentially what brought me here. So I'll say tennis did brought me here. Did you come to play uh, college tennis in America or was it more for a kind of a profession? Actually, I came here just on vacation. And by playing here at Cedar the Post, I met a guy by the name of Lawrence Cleaver. Mm -hmm. And Lawrence Cleaver and Robbie Wagner had a camp together called Eastern Excel that had tons of tennis players. So by being here on vacation, I had nothing to do besides going out at night and partying and hanging out with some friends, some of my tennis friends. And eventually, they, he saw me playing and said, hey, you're a pretty good player. Can you practice? Mm -hmm. Practice with a couple of kids who were looking to go to Harvard actually and Princeton at the time and Yale and those kids I thought were decent 
but when my skill, you know, compared to them, I was actually surprised how well I could beat some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was very interesting. Yeah. And then being from Jamaica, um, what role does tennis play in Jamaican culture and local communities? And uh, how does this role differ from the culture surrounding tennis in America? So from a tennis point of view in Jamaica, it's not ideal sport. Mm -hmm. But it's a very small group of us that plays it. And most kids who play tennis in Jamaica are also transitioning from playing soccer or track and field. Yeah. So the grassroots program for soccer and track and field, especially track and field in Jamaica, it, the quality is so high. Mm -hmm. So if you are making your school team as a track star, you are somewhat very athletic, yeah, very fast. So that transitioning for you playing tennis, and that's where I went from track and field into tennis. Got it. So the tennis culture there is more like kids picking up balls at one resort. On the weekends, we would play against each other. Yeah. And then from that, the money will lead toward going to tournament. And then before you know it, you have a bunch of kids just playing tennis every weekend or during the week practicing, and it becomes a small community, but it was a very high level. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then what made you decide to stick with tennis instead of other sports like soccer or track? It wasn't a team sport. I felt like I wanted to be, my grandma always wanted me to do something that I was good at. Yeah. So if I was going to do it, I need to be in the top tier of it. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be an average. So that was her philosophy. Okay. So I became good at tennis. And because I became good at it, I stick with it. Mm -hmm. And it brought me a lot of confidence, helped my self-esteem a lot. Yeah. And when you're good at something, I became an alpha at it. Yeah. So for me, you know, talking a lot of crap, making fun of maybe the guys who used to beat you, and now you start to beat them and things have changed. So it kind of brought that out of me, I guess. Yeah. But it also humbled me too when I take some really bad losses. Makes you have to, you know, rethink a certain things, come back out. But I respect tennis more because it was individual. It was me against me. And the work I put in showed. Yeah. So I, did, I didn't need a teammate. Mm -hmm. And then uh, how has your Jam Jamaican identity impacted your career as both a tennis player and instructor? I think from an identity point, most Jamaican coaches are very funny. A lot of them face adversity at a young age. So... For them, they can teach their kids who are going through struggles of winning a match. I mean, not win matches or losing at a very early age. They find a way to make them motivated and stick with the sport. Because the key in tennis is how do you find motivation to go out there and compete after losses yeah. after losses. And that is very important because there's a lot of people who are good at the sport. But when they get stuck with some form of you know adversity, they don't know how to overcome that. Yeah. So I think most Jamaican coaches are very skilled in that regard of making it fun and making you come back after the losses or after you suffer some major defeats. Could also be off the court from an injury point of view too. Mm -hmm. So I think that part of it makes it easier on those coaches because they've experienced so much yeah. before in their life. So mm -hmm. when you go through something, and then you are dealing with another person who's going through something. Now you have some experience of something to show them, hey, this do happen, but it gets better. Mm -hmm. And how do you move on and find motivation? So we all need motivation. Do you find that that's true kind of across the entire tennis circuit, a lot, across a lot of pro players coming from all different countries, or is that really isolated to uh, mainly Jamaica? No, I said it's, that's a general thing I find. You know, you could find the same guy a guy coming from Russia with the same experience. Yeah. You could find the same guy coming from Africa. You could find someone coming from England. It doesn't matter where, or Israel for that matter. It's just something that you go through and everyone has a different way of bringing that spark back to someone. But okay. I think in Jamaica, most of these cultures have that. They're funny. Mm -hmm. You know, we're from an island. Most island people are very positive. Mm -hmm. And a positive attitude is always going to bring, is always going to impact a negative attitude. Yeah. Because if you're around negative energy, you become a negative person. Mm -hmm. If you're around someone who's very positive, that rubs off on you. And that's very important. We all need positivity because the news is so negative. Who wants to deal with that? Yeah. 
But if you're on a positive environment, you're going to thrive. Makes sense. Uh, and then how do you feel being a tennis player kind of impacted your immigration process to the United States and made you different from other immigrants? Well, in the immigration system for America, America is very great at taking talents from other parts of the world. You could be a scientist. They're going to take you if you're a great scientist. You could be an amazing track and field athlete. They're going to take you. If you want to come here and embody what the American culture stands for. Yeah. They're giving you a chance. Most track and field players here that represent America aren't American born. Mm -hmm. But from a tennis point of view, it did help me because I brought a skill set to the culture of tennis here. So for me, my tennis background helped me in order to go through the immigration process to say, okay, you have something you can vet me by because you're going to vet the person. And by vetting them, you get to see some form of history, some form of trail, what they have done, what they've accomplished. And you say, okay, this person has this. This is something that we could use here and it helps. Got it. All right. And the last question of the day, uh, why tennis? Why do you think tennis has been able to be such an influential platform for social activism throughout the sports history? Well, if you go back and look at people like, for example, Arthur Hatch, <laughs> what do they call it, Arthur Hatch Stadium? Yeah. Somebody who have played the game, dealing with racism, still find grace in it, did not say all whites are bad or all different races are bad. He dealt with what was given to him and tried to take the positive out of it and make the world better for other kids. That's why I think for me personally, the Arthur Hatch Kids Day is one of the most amazing thing for the U.S. Open. And I think from a tennis point of view, I love that about the history of tennis. And sports unify people. So I like when someone say, why tennis? Like, why not tennis? Yeah. If I'm at a tennis match, the guy sits amazing on my left is from Israel. The guy sits on me from my right is from Russia. The guy behind me is from Germany. The guy in front of me could be from, better, uh, from let's say, Chile. Yeah. But we are all there cheering for our athlete that we want to win. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we high five each other and we go home. Mm -hmm. But we had a great experience watching a great match. And that was a moment. Mm -hmm. So why not tennis? You unify people. That's a great answer. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Stoner. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And be sure to stick around for more content. Thank Stay tuned. Why tennis? Why tennis? Why tennis?